Hey everybody, Prepper Nurse One here, and obviously you can see Miss Heather. She's out monitoring the puppies as they are having a walkabout. And the Soxie. And the Soxie, who is being Heather's bodyguard. So, we're going to talk today about rainwater collection and how in four states it is illegal to do that. Uh, Oregon, Washington, Utah, and Colorado, okay? So what I'm going to do over here first is we... It's weird for Colorado Springs. They get a ton of water there. Oh, I know. It's just... Oh, sorry. I startled her. We have right here our 550-gallon water storage tank, which we use to collect rainwater off of the roof, okay? Uh, primarily what we use that for is watering the garden. That's its purpose. That's what we have it there for. So uh, that is why we have that. Now... Obviously, we'll have, I have my own well and stuff like that too, but that's you know, that's besides the point. It's just another way that uh, we reduce the usage of the water from the well. You know, we just it just saves you know your wells. I mean, our well is great. It's 120 feet deep, so I don't really have a, a worry about that. It's not a shallow well that I worry about ever going dry. But you have different government agencies are restricting people, telling people what they can and cannot do as far as collecting rainwater in those four states. Uh, there was actually a case in Oregon where a man had some ponds on his property and they told him to get rid of the ponds because it was he illegal. Had moved there and they were already there. What's that? He had moved there and they were already there. Yeah, they, I think they were already there when he had moved there. And they were saying that uh, they were illegal and that he needed to get rid of those ponds. And so he refused to do that, and I know that he ended up spending 30 days in jail. Uh, he was sentenced to jail time for that. Now, how, how ridiculous is that? I think there's bigger fish to fry than worrying about if somebody is collecting rainwater. And it has been proven if you are collecting rainwater, you're not having a large of a drain on the system, you know, as far as the overall consumption of water. Uh, maybe the town or whatever is not going to make enough money off of you, but generally the people that are collecting a lot of rainwater are not in the towns anyway. It's more your farmers, your people out in the country that are doing it. Um, like I said, we do it primarily for use for our gardens and uh, that's, you know, or, or watering the fruit trees. That's why we have um, the storage tank with the extra water. And this year, honestly, this is, I, I'm going to tell you what, this is the first year that we've planted the garden. Now we planted the garden at the end of May. I think it was May 26th or May 27th that, that we put the garden in. And here we are now at the end of June. I have not once, not once, had to water the garden so far this year, which is like unheard of. Both gardens. Both gardens. I haven't had to water either one of them because we've had so much rain. Um, yesterday morning is a great example, okay? We had a downpour in the morning. I mean, it was really coming down for several hours, um, you know, and then by 9 o'clock the rain had stopped. And thankfully. Thankfully, because it was obviously graduation day yesterday. But it was just, it was, the, the, but that's like, that's the kind of year that it has been. We haven't had to use any of that yet. Obviously, we're just getting into the start of summer now. So, you know, that may change, obviously. But anyhow, um, restrictive laws, more and more restrictions on people. It's more and more control uh, of what you can and cannot do. And so that's not, that's not good. I mean, it's just uh, for the government to dictate what is okay and what is not okay. I think that's a little bit insane. Okay, so um, I did want to mention real quick tonight in the live chat. I'm doing a live chat tonight at 8 o'clock. And Miss Heather will be joining me in the live chat. And I'll have my own tea. And she'll have her own tea. That's right, because she's got, tell them which kind. The Ar the Arnold Palmer. Like half the lemonade and half uh, iced tea, correct? Yes. Same Arizona brand. Arizona brand, but she likes the uh, Arnold Palmer half lemonade and half iced tea. So, anyway, uh, we're going to be talking about 10 things to prepare for f before a major EMP would hit the country. So we're going to be talking about that tonight. So I think it'll be a good topic. Um, if you would like to join us, we will be on at 8 o'clock tonight, uh, Eastern Standard Time. So please look for us to this evening. Uh, little prepper lady is not going to be joining me tonight. She just got back the other day from her trip, so she should be joining me back next Sunday. She's just trying to get everything re-squared away and get ready. She's got homework and all kinds of other stuff going on. So, but uh, so Heather will be joining me this evening. And obviously, I'm the better option. <laughs> yes, I will say that again so they can see. Obviously, I'm the better option. That's right. <laughs> I actually live at the home set. 
It's right, Jay. It's right, exactly. So, uh, anyway, um, also today's the last day of the sale for the Legacy Freeze Dried Foods. If you want to take advantage of that on my website, 25% uh, off on all of the bucket meals that we have um, on, on the website, preppernurse1.com. So, if you're looking to add to your freeze dried for your long term freeze dried food storage, now is a good time to take advantage of that. Uh, it's been a fairly decent day. I'm going to kick this around. You can see the wind blowing the flags around. And uh, obviously we have Australia right here. So the wind's been blowing the flags around pretty good today. Uh, it has been cooler today. We're in the low 70s today. So it's actually been very, very nice. We're not sweating and dying. But uh, really nice day. I'm not sure what we brought in power-wise. We could probably go and check that out. We can take a walk over. I wanted to show you this uh, flowers that we got hanging out here too on this hanging basket. They're really, really pretty. So there's the flowers. Nice little hanging basket. Some of the stuff is dying, but the flowers are still doing good. Anyway, so we will go over and we will check out how our solar is doing today. Oh, and I was going to show you guys this, too, on the cherry tree. We have a few cherries there and up here that are almost ready. So we're going to get a few cherries this year, which will be nice. All right, let's go in in here and take a look real quick. Now, I want to hear your guys' feedback also on this topic. All right, let's see. We have... 2.0 kilowatt hours on this side. We have pulled in 2.9 on this side. So right now we're 4.9 kilowatt hours so far for the day. Uh, the batteries are in float and the batteries are at 99% and it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon right now. So not bad at all. Uh, like I said, we have a somewhat overcast day. So it's uh, definitely... Like I said, you see the clouds and stuff, but uh, not a bad day. Decent amount of power. We're still obviously pulling in more power right now, so we're going to be well over 5 kilowatt hours on the day. So anyway, um, I definitely want to hear your guys' feedback on this topic with the rain catchment or rain collection. Um, like I said, we put ours up here the first, the first when we got here, and so... Uh, you know, that's why, you know, I wanted to have as another f form of a backup in case of an emergency that we have another source of water. So I had somebody ask me why the storage tank, why do I have my water storage tank in the ground here? Why not just run directly from the well into the house? Again, thinking ahead um, and saying, okay, if something happens, if there was an emergency situation, and the power, like I said, if there was an EMP type of situation, I basically have a thousand gallons of water underground right here. Uh, basically, I pu pull the top off of here and I have access to my water. And then I would also have another 550 gallons of water right here. So, water would not be an issue. And again, like I've told you guys before, we now have the shallow well over here as well as another water source. And if I had to, I can pull the cap off of my well because it's an artesian well the water is always coming up the water line on that is about two feet so that's why I have that tank in the ground um, I always will have access to water so that's one of the reasons why I do that so I just wanted to explain that um, so the, the person that was curious about that that's why um, I was going to show you something else and uh, so somebody had made the suggestion of, and I started doing it. I just did it with a couple buckets right now. Uh, these buckets are buckets that I had used a couple years ago when, oh, my phone's ringing, so hold on, guys. I'm going to kill that, and I will, uh, of course, that's Mike, my IT guy, and he is on the Watchman News, so you want to check his channel out as well. But uh, I'll have to call him back, so I'm not sure what he wanted. But anyway, so I took the, uh, these buckets here that I had used a couple of years ago. And I've used them for a lot of different stuff. But I had drilled holes in the bottom of these buckets when I got them. 
and uh, we used them for the garden. And we tried a, a, a bucket method, which was a disaster here, just so you know. But anyway, um, what I've done is a couple of them I've put the, uh, in the buckets, and I got the buckets filled with stone. So even if it rains, that water's going to just come right out the bottom of those anyway. But it's, it's more solid, and they're not going to blow over in the wind. Those are five-gallon buckets, and they're all full of stone now. And I'm not ever going to run out of stone around here. And obviously there's the chickens. Uh, they are cleaning up. We gave them some celery, and you can see the apples. We cored some more apples so they don't get the. We uh, make sure that the the core is out so they don't eat any of the seeds, and we got the apples in here for them as well. So, yeah, they're happy chickens. Oh, look at they're all come running out. Oh, you got something for me? You got something for me? No, I don't. You guys, you guys are little pigs, and you girls over here, the little white ones here. Um, we got the one rooster and the five hens, they're not laying yet still. Um, obviously, they're still babies, so they're growing up, they're getting bigger. Uh, I'm not sure when they're going to start laying, but uh, they will eventually here. Today we got four eggs, so my four mature girls laid their four eggs today. And I don't know, so out of these four, I get three brown eggs and one white egg. Now, I'm not sure which one lays the white egg. I have no idea. I think it might be her, just because she's so different from the other ones. I'm not sure, but I get uh, three to four eggs every day, and uh, so we're doing good that way. But, yep, those are our chickies. They're doing good, and there's the big boy. He's very cool. They're, and even the other rooster, um, they're really good birds. All, all the birds are. It's, it's so funny. Like I said, they came running. And then there's, look at, there's Abel checking out the chickens going, well, those are interesting. What do you think, Abel? He's our crier. What do you think, baby? Yep, there he is. <laughs> okay, guys. So, anyway, um, look for us tonight in the live chat. We will talk to you then. And that's going to be 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And, uh, like I said, Heather's going to be joining me today for that. So, anyway, I will talk to you guys later. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, look forward to seeing you in the live chat tonight. Remember, guys, we're all in this together. That is important to remember. Also remember, hug and kiss the ones you love. Tell them every single day. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen in life, so it's really, really important to tell the people that you care about every single day. Um, also remember, STD, guys. It's one step at a time, one thing at a time, and one day at a time. Whatever you're trying to accomplish, whatever you're trying to do, you can do it. The only one that can stop you from getting there is yourself, okay? So stay positive, stay happy, stay away from negative people, and you're going to do fine. I will talk to you guys tonight. I have a great day. Prepper Nurse One, out for now. And then we got Miss Molly here. We got Lucy over here. Miss Sox is back there, and here comes Abel. So there's just four of the babies. All right, guys, I'll see you.